Hello, hope you're doing well. I was recently having a chat with technology guru Anne Charles about what we could do to increase the diversity in radio because, you know, plurality has to be a good thing, right? And she suggested to me, why don't I make a video explaining the steps you need to go through to launch your radio station on DAB Digital Radio? And I thought, you know what, that's a great idea. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the things or the processes that you need to follow to launch your station on DAB Digital Radio in the UK. So there are four main areas that I'm going to discuss with you. So the first one's quite a simple one, really, and that's down to how much you really want to go crazy or how much your budget is programs. What are people actually going to listen to? You know, is your radio station going to be a turntable? Is it going to be a computerized automated playout system? Uh, it could be anything. It could be, you know, MP3 files going out on a loop. It could be a fully blown radio station with presenters and producers. Really, that's down to your imagination and budgets. Music royalties. Now, if you're going to broadcast any kind of copyrighted music, then you will have to pay music royalties, at least here in the UK. Now, if you're broadcasting an all speech service, obviously, if you don't play any copyrighted music, you don't need music royalties. But if your station has jingles or adverts that contain copyrighted music, then yes, you do need to pay the music royalties. If you broadcast music that was copyrighted in another country, the chances are you'll still have to pay music royalties in the UK too. And that's because the main uh, rights bodies, PRS and PPL, have reciprocal agreements with other international copyright bodies. I'll go on to what you need to pay very shortly, but the long and short of it is, unless you've created all of the work yourself, um, or someone has signed over the copyright to you, or you're playing unsigned artists, perhaps, then the chances are you will have to pay music royalties. The license that most people will have heard of is the PRS license. Now, PRS, the Performing Rights Society, they basically represent the song writers. Most stations will need what is known as the commercial radio license. This is on their website. Um, it tells you uh, what you can do with the license and the fees are all on their website. There's two parts to it. There's the annual royalty fee. So if you're just starting out and haven't made any money or you've made up to well, just under £141,000 in a year, you pay a £77 royalty fee. However, uh, you have to pay the royalty rate as well. Now, the royalty rate is based on net broadcast revenue. So if you make just under £40,000 in a year, then the royalty rate is £1,178. And you can see the more uh, your net broadcast revenue goes up, you then uh, start paying a percentage of that revenue. Now, if uh, you play music perhaps incidentally, uh, so maybe you're setting up a new station or a talk station, but you do play some music, then the annual royalty rate uh, is 1%. So I suppose that's something. Um, and then it does say here, look, annual minimum fee. So the absolute minimum you'll be paying to be on DAB on the PRS uh, will be £1,255 a year. And then on the website, you've got the application form. Now, PPL, who are Phonographic Performance Limited, they basically represent the record labels. Um, so again, information is on their website. Now, most stations will go for the commercial radio license. And there is this helpful summary here. So if I just open up this uh, PDF here. Da, 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 da. Here we go. So... Uh, it talks about the various fees you might have to pay here. So to be on a local DAB multiplex uh, is £809 a year minimum fee, uh, or a national DAB one is £1,473. Now you might notice this one here that says local DAB simulcast. So if, for example, you were already on AM or FM paying the £809, um, then to upgrade to DAB is an extra 148, but you, that rate is not available uh, if you're DAB only. Um, so like I say, for most stations, they'll be paying £809. Now, uh, again, there are also uh, net broadcast revenue fees uh, here. So for PPL, if you make above uh, 48, just over £48,500, um, then it goes up in various increments. 
Um, but again, like uh, PRS, they have uh, an email address. So if you're not sure what applies to you, uh, then just message them. The next thing that you need to obtain is an Ofcom license. Now, there are two types of license and I'll discuss them both now. So I'm going to start with the license that most radio stations on DAB in the UK have, which is the digital sound program license. Uh, so again, on the Ofcom website, you go to the apply for DAB program service or multiplex license. I'm just talking through these steps because the Ofcom website is a bit of a mess. Um, but here you'll see that there are some helpful notes of guidance. Um, and if you have a look at those here, it, it's, they're well worth a read because they explain um, who can and can't hold a license, uh, what the various fees are. Um, in in short, though, um, it's pretty straightforward. You know, it's £250 to apply. You have to pay £100 a year. Um, and by when Ofcom grant you the license, um, you basically, you know, have to comply with the Ofcom programming code. But you know, all of the various ins and outs uh, are on the Ofcom website, so you can actually view the sample license here. So, um, you know, if you want to know what it is you're actually going to be agreeing to, uh, then you can go on the Ofcom site, um, and where it's yellow, that will just be filled in with the details of your various uh, station. With a DSP license, they're really flexible because you basically can broadcast uh, whatever you want as long as it complies with the program code. So there's no need to have your studio in a particular location. You you know, there's no requirements recording live broadcasting or original content or anything like that. Um, the main thing really is that you control the content that you're broadcasting. But the DSP license is a really flexible license and that is why most radio stations in the UK have a DSP license. There is, however, a new type of license called a Community Digital Sound Program license, or CDSP, the Ofcom issue. And uh, again, you can view all the details on the Ofcom website. They have notes of notes of guidance. You can view a sample license. Um, so you know it's well worth checking out. Um, but you know, essentially, a Community uh, Digital Sound Program license, it has more obligations than a DSP license. Uh, however, there are some upsides. So for example, if you have a community digital sound program license, a CDSP, um, you're entitled to apply for reserved capacity on a multiplex, which I'll get onto in a moment. Um, you're, also you're also entitled to apply to the Ofcom Community Radio Fund, um, although you just merely apply for it. Of course, there's no guarantee that you'll actually, you know, get any money from the from from the fund because, you know, it's always oversubscribed. Um, but as you can see here, the fees uh, are exactly the same as for the DSP, the Digital Sound Program. So again, it's two hundred and fifty pounds to apply, uh, and then a hundred pounds a year. So you know that's pretty straightforward. And again, uh, on the Ofcom website, they have a sample license. So Again, you know, the yellow bits would obviously be specific to your particular uh, station. Um, the other thing, so in terms of obligations, right, what you need to know with a CDSP that is kind of key. With a CDSP, your studio must be based within the transmission area and you have certain key commitments um, because you're, you know, to have that reserved capacity, you have to benefit the community. Um, so, you know, as to what those key commitments are, that there are obligations regarding certain hours of local content, um, you know, giving people access to the airwaves, that kind of thing. By the way, before I forget, to be a CDSP service, you have to be a non-profit company. So that could be a community interest company or a private limited company by guarantee, but essentially you have to be a body corporate and non-profit making um, non-profit organizations can also hold a DSP, that's fine. But if you're not a CIC or a private limited company by guarantee without share capital, you have to have a DSP license. Those are the rules. Now, a moment ago, I talked about the Polygon 
uh, for the multiplex. So if I uh, open Winchester as an example here, if you uh, have a look at this map here, the Ofcom map, the blue line or the blue you know, polygon, that is the licensed area of the multiplex. So any CDSP service that wants to be on in Winchester must have its studio address located within this blue line. It can't, for example, be here uh, in Alton or down here in Romsey, no matter how close it is to the actual polygon, it must be within the area. And, um, you know, I've been approached by radio stations saying, oh, but we're very close. Can't you make an exception? As a multiplex operator, I don't grant the license. It's down to Ofcom. So you can only have the reserved capacity if Ofcom, uh, you know, determine that you are a CDSP holder for that particular area. With a DSP, doesn't matter. You can be broadcast anywhere you want. You could be in Winchester. You could be in Romsey. You could be in Alton. You could be in Timbuktu. Well, it's got to be in the UK. But you have total flexibility as to where your studio is. With a CDSP, you must be locally located. Um, and each multiplex has a certain amount of reserved capacity. So in Winchester, for example, I have three slots that I have to set aside for CDSP services, um, which I've got two of them taken. So if someone comes along uh, with a license for Winchester uh, and they're a CDSP, then that's great. I can accommodate them in the reserved capacity. Of course, I can broadcast more than that, but um, in Winchester, free is the absolute uh, minimum. And then the rest of the services are all uh, DSP. Now, some of those services are local services to Winchester, but they've decided for whatever reason that being a DSP suits them. And that's absolutely fine. But you've got the choice. The other thing to note with CDSPs is that you can only have a CDSP uh, license for a small scale multiplex. So say, for example, you were going to go, uh, you're looking at broadcasting on a county wide multiplex, say, for example, South Hampshire, then uh, you can't have a CDSP. CDSP is only for small scale multiplexes. If you go on the Ofcom website, you can see um, a list of small scale multiplexes uh, or ones that have been awarded. So you can click those award statements and it will tell you who has won those uh, licenses. So if there's a particular area uh, that's on there uh, and it's on air, that's great. You can start broadcasting. Um, but Ofcom are doing, you know, a rolling program of licenses. So if there's not a multiplex in your area now, uh, there may well be one in the future. That's if you want to be a small scale, uh, you know, service. So in terms of what it costs um, in the UK, it's a license requirement for these small scale multiplexes. They have to publish a rate card. So sticking with Winchester as an example uh, here on my website, I've got what I charge the service providers. So at one end of the scale, it's down at 18 pounds a year. Um, you know, all the way up to £4,000 and potentially beyond if for stations that want more capacity. Um, and, you know, some multiplexes will be more affordable than others. Um, you may find in some areas that multiplexes are full, so you may have to join a waiting list. Um, but nevertheless, if you're interested in broadcasting on DAB, speak to your multiplex operator, go through Ofcom's website, look at the directory, find out the contact details or do a Google search or use your other favorite search engine if you use something else. Um, but speak to the multiplex operator, find out what they charge. Multiplex operators have to be fair and effective in the way they conduct their business. Um, and you may find like uh, I do, for example, in Winchester, CDSP services pay a different rate to DSP services. Um, obviously, these are the small scale fees here, but, you know, if you're going to broadcast on a, you know, traditional local multiplex, you know, one that covers a county, uh, or if you're going to broadcast nationally, the outlay is going to be tens, if not the high hundreds of thousands of pounds a year. So do bear that in mind and do speak to the multiplex operator that you're interested in broadcasting on um, to get an idea of what it's going to cost. But in short, the multiplex operator can't broadcast your station as a minimum if you don't hold a DSP or a CDSP. So make sure that you're eligible to hold those type of licenses. I suppose the other piece of advice I would give you is just don't get the license for the sake of it. Um, be sure that you can actually get on DAB first because most multiplex operators, um, they would they would just be happy with knowing that you're eligible for one as opposed to you actually having one. If a service provider comes to me and they say, you know, 
can I go on your multiplex? Uh, I already hold a DSP license. It really makes no difference. So that's just something to bear in mind. As long as you're eligible, that's the main thing, really. So in summary, those are the four main things you need to think about when starting your radio station. So let's just go through what the potential costs might be. This isn't exhaustive, of course, but you know, to make your programmes, the cost of acquiring any music you might need, a studio or play-out machine, the presenters even. I mean, potentially you could get all of these things for free, or virtually free, or you might have a big budget, but that's just something to consider. What are the things that people are going to actually listen to? What is that really going to cost you? So music royalties. So... You know, I do advise you contact the music royalty agencies directly, but for PRS, you're looking at a minimum of £1,255 a year. For PPL, you're looking at a minimum of £809 a year. However, while the PRS fee includes DAB and internet broadcasting, because you probably be on a probably want to be on a smart speaker, right? PPL's DAB fee of £809 doesn't include the internet. So to be On DAB, uh, it's £809, but you still need to pay £1,473 on top of that um, to simulcast on the internet. The Ofcom fees are pretty straightforward because they're the same whether it's a CDSP or a DSP license, which is £250 to apply, and then an annual fee of £100 on top of that. And then finally, you have your multiplex capacity fees. So like I said earlier, small scale is a matter potentially of nothing or hundreds or low thousands of pounds a year. To be on a local multiplex, uh, you're looking at tens of thousands a year. Uh, And to be on the national, you're looking at the high hundreds uh, of thousands of pounds a year. Um, So do bear that in mind as well. So, you know, assuming that you have some kind of setup, some sort of studio, you know, you need to pay for the music royalties, you need to pay for the Ofcom fee, the multiplex fees. Realistically, you can be on the air for five, six thousand pounds a year, you know, on a small scale multiplex. And I think that's pretty cool, you know, to to be heard on a radio. You know, you could be heard next to Radio 2, Kistry, Talk Sports, in people's cars, in their kitchens. I think that's really cool. And it's never been more accessible to broadcast on terrestrial radio than it has been now for really not a lot of money. You know, the small broadcasters, it's brilliant because, you know, you just pay the multiplex operator, which takes care of the complicated stuff like the transmission. You know, the Ofcom fees are pretty straightforward. You know, the music royalties are what they are. It's not a lot you can do about that. But um, yeah, you know, good luck. Any questions, ask me in the comments. Um, And I really hope this video has inspired you to think about setting up your radio station. And whether you're on one of my multiplexes or someone else's, I really wish you the best of luck.